All right, guys, so today's video, I'm gonna show you how to 3D model and 3D print a shoe deodorizer that you can drop in some old stinky shoes. So what this is, it's just a small capsule. Uh, it's got holes all around it and a lid that threads on and it's full of silica gel that will absorb odors. So the silica gel that I'm using is actually the crystal cat litter. Uh, I got the unscented kind. Um, but once it's sealed up, you just throw it in some shoes and it will deodorize the inside of the shoes. Uh, modeling this was pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm still fairly new to Fusion 360, uh, but the more projects I do with it, the easier it gets. So I'm gonna show you how I model this. Let's get to it. Okay, so let's see how I designed this thing. So I've got Fusion 360 open, brand new document. Uh, I'm gonna start off by clicking um, the component here, and uh, this is just kind of the parent component. I'm going to create a new component, and I'm going to call this uh, canister. And so now you can see our new component is the active component. Uh, our parent is still out there. So uh, before we get too far, uh, because I've had it happen several times in my very short time using Fusion 360, is I'll get up, walk away, something will happen, it'll close down, all my work's gone. Um, there may be an autosave feature, but I don't know. So. I'm just going to save this as deodorizer. All right, so let's start off. Um, let's, we're starting with the canister, and I'm just going to start by creating a cylinder on our flat plane here. I'll go right on the origin point. I know I want it 42 millimeters diameter, and let's say 25 millimeters tall. So we've now got a nice cylinder. Um, now we want to put a dome to top on this. There's tons of ways you could do this. Um, I think I'm just going to, probably the best way, is there a, oh, look at that, a sphere. Let's do a sphere. So I'll do it on this surface here, right in the middle. And we'll do this as 42 millimeters as well. Oh, and look at that, it cut. Um, so you can see it kind of made a dish and that's not what I wanted. So let's try that again. Let's do a sphere. I'll do it on that face and click it right in the middle. And over here on operation, we want to join. And so now we can, now we've got this nice profile. The next step is we need to make a little shoulder here. I want to use a 38 millimeter thread and make them about six millimeters long. Uh, but because I won't be able to print on this top surface, I need to print it in this orientation. And if I'm insetting the thread, I will have a shoulder here, an overhang, that won't have any support. So I need a way to support that. So uh, I'm gonna just create a sketch down here. I'll just right click on this face and do create sketch. And I'll hit the C button for circle. And I'll select our center point here. And I just want this as 38 millimeter diameter. And now I just need to extrude this very outer face. So I'm gonna finish this sketch and I'm gonna select that and extrude. And I'm gonna go this way, so I'm cutting and I'm gonna do negative eight. And so, so now I've got this inset shoulder here. But we won't really be able to print this overhang. Once we get to this layer, it's gonna try printing this outer perimeter and it's all just gonna droop and fall. So to get around that, we're gonna make a chamfer from this face up to this face. So I'll go select the chamfer tool and I'll select our little inner diameter here and I'll just drag it out until it's completely flush. Okay, now we've got our outside profile and now we need to make this thing hollow. So we want even thickness walls throughout and so I'll use the shell command for this and click shell and then I'll just select the face that I want to hollow out from. And then here I can choose my wall thickness. Now I print with a 0.6 millimeter nozzle. And so a good wall thickness is something that's divisible by 0.6. Uh, 1.8 may be a little too thin. I, I want this to be a nice robust thing. So I'm gonna go with the next size, which would be 2.4. Um, and now you can see that hollowed out. Um, just to get an idea of what it looks like, we can do a cross section here. And I'm just gonna do it on this face. I'll click the flip button here. 
And so now we can see we've got a nice 2.4 millimeter wall thickness throughout. Um, I'm going to cancel that section analysis. Just uh, The next thing, we're going to create some threads on this bottom part. So we'll click our thread tool and we'll click our outer face here. Uh, because this is a common size, it's a 38 millimeter, it automatically chooses our 38 millimeter thread. This is our metric profile. Uh, but in order for these threads to be printable, we need to make sure we check this modeled checkbox. And so that actually puts the geometry in here so there's actual threads on the item. Um, we'll click OK there. And so we'll end up modeling a cap to thread onto this, um, but the threads on the cap and the threads on the canister, there's not going to be any tolerance between them. So we need to add those tolerances in. So the best way to do this is we have our the face of the thread and then the very tip of the thread. And to, what I typically do, what I know works well for my printer, is I will select the very tip of the thread and then one of the faces. It can either be the, the top side or the underside. So I just picked those two and I'll hit the Q button to open the push-pull tool. Uh, you can see my two faces are already selected and then you can just kind of drag this down. I know I want to add a clearance of 0.2 millimeters, so I'm going to do minus a negative 0.2 millimeters, and that's going to shrink these in towards the part a little bit. I'll hit OK. And that's looking pretty good. Um, the next thing we need to do is add all of our holes in it. So um, we'll use a couple different uh, pattern processes, uh, but the first thing we need is a single hole. Um, so I'm going to turn on the origin just so we can see the planes here. And you can't really see them because they're kind of hidden in the part. Um, but I'm going to select, let's go to, I'm going to select this plane here. I'm going to right click on it and do an offset plane. And basically what I want to do is create a plane that is right on the edge of the canister. And so I know my outer diameter is 42 millimeters, so I'm going to set this as 21 millimeters. And that gives us a plane that's right on the edge of our canister here. So I'll now click this, and I want to create a sketch on that plane. And now, because I started with this on the origin point, I know this is right in the center of my component here and I just need to create a circle. And I'm just going to do this two millimeters up and I'm going to do a 1.0 size hole. And so that's just going to be one individual hole and we can finish that sketch and we can go ahead and extrude this and we know our thickness is 2.4 millimeters um, but I'm just going to go ahead and extend that out to three millimeters just to make sure I've got a full uh, thickness through the part. Um, you can go inside here and pull this a little farther. And I guess technically you can do it really long. Um, the other thing you can do is you can do an extent type and instead of doing a distance, you can do a two object. Uh, but because this interface is all the way around the thing, if you click it, it tries to extend it all the way over here, which I guess isn't a bad thing. It's just kind of weird. Um, there are some other settings here um, where you can do all and it'll go all the way through the face, but I only just want a single circle. So I'm just going to do distance and I know my wall thickness is only going to be 2.4 mil millimeters. So um, I'll just set it to something that's greater than that, not 400, uh, four. And so we're good. Uh, make sure our operation is cut and you can tell it's cut because it shows up in red. If it were something else, it would be a different color here. So uh, we'll go ahead and make that hole in there. And there's our hole. Now, uh, the next thing we need to do is basically repeat this feature, this little hole, in a straight line and where it follows the curve all the way up. Now, to do that, you need to give it a path that it can follow. And so zoom out here so I can see this face uh, or see this plane. Um, this plane, the normal X plane, XZ plane, 
uh, cuts right through the middle of that circle that we originally created. And so I'm going to create a sketch right on that. And I'll double click my mouse wheel and that'll get me in fit in the screen. And now I'm going to use the line tool. And because we are on a parallel projection, um, looking straight on the front, uh, it'll snap to our certain grid marks. So I'm going to click here and do a straight line up to the here. And then I'm going to grab the arc tool and I'm going to do a center point arc. We can see our green axis here is our center line. So there's our center point. I'm going to come out here 21 millimeters and do this up to 90 degrees. And just to show you, I'll go ahead and hide the body. And so this is the path that we're going to follow. This is our new path that we created. So we'll finish that sketch. And now if we select the interface of that hole, we can go to create pattern and pattern on path. And so it shows our object type as faces. We've got one object selected and now we choose our path. We'll choose the path that we just created. And now we need to set a distance between them and a number of occurrences. So I'm going to drag that all the way up until it snaps on my the very end of my path. And you can see our quantity over here is three. Um, you can also grab this and either drag it up or down to increase or decrease the quantity. And so uh, it looks like 10, 10 is a pretty good even distribution for this entire um, this entire cylinder. But you can see that my holes are all oriented the same direction. But I actually want those to follow the path. So I can change my orientation instead of being identical to path direction. And now you can see it orients those holes so they're straight through towards the center of the object. Um, now that's, that's corrected, if we add some more, you can see we, we can add a, a whole bunch of holes. Um, but I, th I think 10 is probably what I want to go with. And so we'll hit OK. So it'll generate those. And now I'm going to do a section analysis. And we should slice right through those holes since it's right on the one of the original planes and you can see we're all the way through there. So um, now we basically just need to repeat these 10 holes all the way around the thing. So I'm going to leave that selected, but I'm going to turn it off for a minute. Um, now we can do another pattern and do a circular pattern. And so we're going to choose faces and we're going to select all of these holes that we created. Um, since this one's right on the tip, we don't really need to repeat that just because it's going to be the same thing over and over. Uh, now we need to select the axis that we want to rotate this pattern around. And so I'm going to choose just the blue Z axis here. And you can see our quantity is currently set to three. And so again, we can just drag our little handle here to increase. There's four, five, six, seven, nine, twelve. Um, this inner ring here, I feel like if we go higher than ten, those holes are probably going to get too close together and it won't be very strong in that area. And so I think I'm going to stay on ten. And so it looks like there's a lot more holes because the part is somewhat transparent. So you can see the outside of the hole and the inside of the hole. Um, but that looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And now you can see that we've got a bunch of holes through our item. So that's basically it for the canister. Um, if you wanted to change the size of these holes, um, because we created those on our, on a different sketch or on its own sketch, uh, we can go back. That was right after we did our offset plane. So we can go to here and we can edit that sketch and we could change those to a 
two millimeter hole and finish that sketch. And it'll now apply that size to all of the holes. So for what I'm wanting to put in this canister, um, I think probably one and a half millimeter holes would be about the biggest I'd want to do just because I don't want things to fall through these holes. Um, but I, I think I'm going to leave it at one millimeter. So I'm just going to undo that change. Just wanted to show it for an example. So that's it for our canister. Um, now let's create the lid that screws on. So I'm going to come back up here, select the parent and create a new component. And I will call this one lid. And I'm going to go ahead and hide this, hide the canister. And now on the lid, I'm just going to start off with a cylinder again. So I'm going to do it on our flat plane and right on the origin point. Uh, we know we want a 42 millimeter and I'm going to make this eight millimeters tall. Uh, we now need a hole in this. And so we can, you can either create a sketch on here or you can create a hole. Drag our hole right over to the origin point. We only want the hole six millimeters deep. We can choose our drill point. Uh, so whether we want a, a point on the drill, uh, we just want ours to have a flat bottom. And then we want our outer diameter to be 38 millimeters. Uh, we can also choose a our thread directly from here. And so we've got a hole tap and you can see because we did 38 millimeters, it automatically chooses our thread type and we want to make sure this is modeled. And we'll hit OK. So on our canister, we added a little bit of tolerance to the thread, the tip of the thread and the face of the thread. But I'm going to add just a little bit more here just because I, I want a, a real smooth uh, threading action. So I'm going to choose my top of my thread and the tip of my thread and hit the Q button for push pull. And I on this, I only want to do uh, 0.1 millimeter clearance. So that'll give me a total of 0.3 millimeters overall. And good with that. Uh, the last step is because this side will print down, I tend to get a little bit of over extrusion on my very first layer. Um, so to soften that edge, I'm going to chamfer I can find the tool. Just going to add like a one millimeter chamfer to that edge. And we should be good. So now, if we have these two together, um, actually, let me select this one and I am going to move it up two millimeters because our the thickness of our lid is two millimeters. And now if we turn our section analysis on, our th threads didn't really line up, but um, if one of these parts gets rotated, it'll, it'll line the threads up. But now we can see that our um, cap will probably actually bottom out on this, but nothing's going to be able to leak out of there. It's not going to be watertight. It's got holes in it, but uh, we should be good to print that. So. So that's basically it. I'll go ahead and right click on the lid component, save as a mesh. And 3MF is the new types of files that you should be using if you're exporting. Uh, you can just have color information and a bunch of other stuff in the 3MF format. So I'm gonna output that as deodorizer lid. And now I'm gonna do the same thing for the canister save it as a mesh and go this deodorizer canister and we'll save that out here and so now let's open cura okay now we can in cura open our both our canister and the lid did not orient it properly We can arrange all models. Uh, 
like so. Everything looks good. Um, I'm going to print these in a 0.32 millimeter uh, layer height. This, it's a functional print. It doesn't need to look super good. The one thing that I will do is use adaptive layers. And what that does is it will um, resize the layers depending on the shape of the object. And so in this nice straight section, if it can, it'll do a little bit thicker layer. Uh, but once you get to where there's curvature, uh, just to give it a better surface finish, it will actually make it a, a thinner layer, uh, just so you get a little more detail through those shapes. And so I like to do that. Um, let's look at the, the time difference. So with adaptive layers turned on for my 0.6 millimeter nozzle, we're looking at one hour and 22 minutes. If I turn off adaptive layers and re-slice, So it adds about five minutes, but you end up with a little bit better looking object. So go ahead and save that to the disk and we'll load it up in Octoprint and get it printed. So earlier I decided to use a one millimeter hole. And while the holes on the sides are probably okay, um, the holes in the end aren't all the way through. Um, so it may be worthwhile to go with a little bigger hole size because you can see the size of these crystals is larger than I originally thought. So um, a one and a half millimeter or possibly even two millimeter hole would probably work better. You'll get a little better airflow and uh, it'll still retain the crystals inside. I'll probably actually uh, change my model and reprint these with a two millimeter hole uh, just so it gets a little better airflow through it. Uh, so that's going to be it for this one, guys. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, definitely leave them down below. Uh, if you aren't in a location where you have some crystal cat litter, I'll try to find a link and put it down in the description. Um, if you like what I do, make sure to hit, give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. And until next time, we'll see you later.